In the latest episode of Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast, his guest, Andrew Schultz, complains about a phenomenon that's not actually happening, but like the rube that he is, Bill Maher believes him and proceeds to get enraged by said phenomenon that's not actually happening. And then they kind of just go back and forth complaining about this thing that isn't really a thing that nobody's talking about. And it's so laughable, it almost feels like this could be satirical. Like if you told me that this was satire and I didn't know the people involved, I would believe you. Nonetheless, this is real and they're seriously angry about um, this issue. Let's watch. The reason we're gay is because we're attracted to one sex rather than the other, right? And then we're back to fucking in the ass. Well, <laughs> but that's binary. That's yeah. binary. I, the other yes, I, no, I know. And, 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 and get rid of the binary. Yeah. What the f*** happens with homosexuals? So then we get to the point, this is where we get back to vaginas and assholes again. So, People telling me I have to go down again on a vagina in, if I'm not to be a bigot, if the, if the person is taking testosterone. What? It is, they I now, the description, being gay is now often, sometimes regarded as what's called a bigoted genital preference. Being so the, gay is a bigoted genital preference. preference. I can't so even here, follow this. Let me tell I'm you. I'm going to fucking cut my fingers off. You, you are. Uh, someone is a woman who becomes a man. But he uh, still has a vagina. Born a woman, becomes a man. Has a vagina. So they add on a penis? No, they don't add on a penis. Okay. They, but you, but they, you meet them, you don't, and you decide you don't want to date them, even though they've now... They have like beard or or a masculine physique in some ways because they build up their muscles with but the testosterone. No penis. no penis. Actually, no, not just not a penis. A and you're not allowed to not want someone who doesn't have a penis when you're gay. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Yes. I find that's that. where we are. I, I I've gone from I'm gone from uh, I was once told. But it's just I, a preference. It, it's, it's like. I like dick. Oh, Christ. I hope they don't snip that out here. <laughs> Bill Maher says, uh, no, but that's, it's, oh, that, I can't even. No, I can't and, even. and you're a bigot. I, you're a bigot if you don't agree with that. And I'm like, you know, the last person okay. that told so, me I needed so, to, so, needed to fuck a vagina was a priest. Before and, I ask you your plugs. how are you telling me this? How, I mean, when does, how does it end? The gay rights movement was about liberation. This is about controlling people. And, and, and it's also controlling gay people. Gay men are being told, if you do not want to have sex with someone's vagina, you're actually a bigot. No, they're not. They're not. You made that up. Nobody believes you. This is one of those stories that somebody tells that on its face is so ridiculous that you can obviously see that they're lying. They're making it up because they're bored or they want attention, but that definitely did not f***ing happen. You're a liar, Andrew Schultz. And I don't know why you made that up, but regardless, you are playing into this vilification narrative about trans people pushed by the right, which intends to portray them as unreasonable authoritarian bullies, when in actuality, that's not what their real grievances are. I take it most trans people don't care if you're attracted to them. In fact, I'd say that 99.9% .9 of trans men couldn't care less about you, Andrew Schultz, and whether or not you want to date them. But what they do care about is being able to exist, regardless if you understand them or are attracted to them. And it's especially egregious for a gay man to promote this trans bully myth, considering that the same tactic was deployed against gay people not that long ago. But when a community becomes a political target, people will believe anything to confirm their pre-existing biases about this community. I mean, ask yourself this, Andrew. Do you really believe that trans people are demanding everyone in society to be pansexual? Do you honestly think that most trans people are thinking about whether or not folks like you are attracted to them? They're normal people just like you and I. They're thinking about video games and how to pay the bills. But these fuckers go out of their way to find reasons to hate trans people and they hate them so much, I guess, that they've got to make shit up about them. It's just ridiculous. He also said something that stood out to me. He said, quote, if we get rid of the binary, what happens to homosexuals? As if gays and lesbians are existentially threatened by the existence of trans people. It's just so cynical and bad faith that it's laughable. 
It feels like a parody. That's how fucking stupid it is. Now, what's funny is that Bill Maher was actually proud of this conversation and tweeted that out. And he quoted Andrew saying, quote, gay men are being told if you do not want to have sex with a vagina, you're actually a bigot. Now, I responded by saying, gay man here, this is complete fucking horseshit because it obviously is. And the internet also responded by roasting the shit out of these two boomer dipshits. Cody Johnston sarcastically asked, are they? Matthew Breen, also a gay man, responded saying, okay, except gay men are definitely not being told this. And the same sentiment was also expressed by Daniel Summers, who also said he has never been told this in his years as a gay man. And the same is true for Ashton Pittman, who says, literally nobody is telling us this. These are fantasies dreamed up by people who hate trans people. And that right there is, I think, the core issue here. If you already are demonizing this group in your mind and you view them as somehow more um more angry and authoritarian and they're out to get you then you will believe anything and this is just another example of that more responses here katie halper chimed in saying if i had a penny for every time a gay man was called a bigot for not wanting to put his penis in a vagina i'd have the exact same amount of money i'd have without said pennies because they don't exist i love how nobody's buying this oatmeal influencer says nobody in human history has ever said this andy richter responded saying can you believe all this stuff that isn't happening to me it's like there are whole groups of people who aren't doing things that impact me in any meaningful way and i'm furious about it life is so hard for me because of all the things that aren't really happening i think that the only thing that would have made that story better was if he confronted the person who said that he's a bigot for being gay and then said and everybody clapped <laughs> like that's just that would have been like the cherry on top if he said that i, I think it just would have been perfect there's a whole subreddit dedicated to people who are full of shit who tell stories like this and i wouldn't be surprised if Andrew Schultz ended up on that subreddit. Now, I tweeted out that response. I showed you what I said, but somebody decided to bring the receipts and they shared this tweet. For all the people about to say this isn't happening, here are the receipts. And she linked to a tweet from 2018 with, wait for it, two retweets. Wow. You know what? I stand corrected. Andrew Schultz is correct. This is apparently a wide-ranging phenomenon because two people retweeted that and 17 liked it. So, yeah. Look, you can probably find a tweet from a trans person who's also a white supremacist. And maybe that tweet has 10 likes. But does that mean that all trans people are white supremacists and all trans people agree with that sentiment? Of course not. Trans people... Again, like all people, human beings, just like us, they're not a monolith, okay? Sometimes they'll say things that you might disagree with. That's fine. Sometimes they'll say things that other trans people don't agree with. But the problem is that these generalizations at this time when they're fighting for existence literally are extremely harmful because it just adds to this narrative that these people should be outcasts from society. Look at them. They're so unreasonable. They're bullies. We're supposed to accept them. Like, this all adds to that narrative. And Andrew Schultz, who's part of the LGBTQ community, is playing into it like the rube that he is. And of course, Bill Maher believes it, because why wouldn't he? He has made it his mission to showcase any times whenever the left has gone too far, gone too woke. But how often does he actually talk about right-wing extremism, which is actually a threat to U.S. democracy. It's just, it's comical at this point. But the sad part is that narratives like this, even if most people don't believe it, it still lands with some people and they believe it. It's just another reason for bigots to hate trans people. Oh, see, look, they're, they're even against gay people. I should definitely be against them. Shut the fuck up. How about this, Andrew Schultz? You mind your own fucking business. Don't date trans people. Don't talk to trans people. Don't understand it. And just let them exist. Stop fighting against them, right? Just shut the fuck up and everyone can be happy. Live and let live. Why don't we get back to that philosophy, okay? Defend them because the same reasons why the right is against them are for the same reasons that the right is against you.
up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralists, woke moralists, woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. Way, way, way. The genital way, region was exposed. Way, way, way. I let her have her way.